Hello, Mav Mind Collective, and welcome to another episode of the HypnoSale Show. Today, we're going to talk about how to create a racy chart. Last video I created was uh, talking about how to roll out a plan effectively to your team. And in that video, I include uh, the step of creating a racy chart. And then I got some response uh, from some of the followers on this channel that said, hey, you know, could you show us how to make a racy chart? Give us a little bit more detail on that. So I said, sure, because I've done this a long time. I've done it quite a bit uh, with the different plans I've rolled out or it, different projects that I've managed. Racy charts are really good for effectively managing expectations. And as I've pointed out in a lot of my videos here on this channel, if you don't like manage expectations correctly and set expectations correctly, the subconscious might get confused or it might create too much mystery and uh, it creates discomfort or there's no sense of comfort or safety for the subconscious to accept and be able to be willing to, you know, go along with whatever the plan is or go along with whatever uh, the, 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 the expectation is because you don't know quite what it is. So that, that being uncomfortable actually uh, suppresses uh, anyone's ability, any of our abilities to want to be successful and, and to succeed at the tasks that we're, that we're assigned or that we need to accomplish or the project that we need to complete. Okay, so it's all happened at the subconscious level. So it's important we always uh, set the expectations correctly. And that's what a RACI does. It sets that expectation in such a way that it eliminates a mystery uh, and annihilates any kind of, uh, you know, confusion that might be going on with a project. So that way subconsciously, at the subconscious level, everyone is comfortable and feels, they feel safe to execute their piece of the plan or project or task or whatever you're doing as a group. So again, race is really used when you have a group of people working on something together. Um, that's really where it makes the most sense and where the, it's like a tool that you use to manage that set of expectations. So the first thing you want to do uh, is you want to make sure you provide clear expectations. So it has to be crystal clear each of the things that you're expecting someone to do on the project or in, during the plan rollout. Okay. So you have to think this through and you have to sort of brainstorm maybe with the team or maybe some key members of the team, maybe pick a couple of your rock stars only or other peers on other, you know, if it's a plan that or a project that involves a lot of other departments, not just your team, bring the other leaders in, brainstorm on, you know, what do we think the different tasks are? And you want to, you know, identify those tasks and then set clear expectations of what that task is and how it should, how it should work or why you have it in there, right? You want to document that and, and try to put it on one line if you can, because a racy chart is going to be columns and rows. It's like a grid. So for every row, you're going to have a task. And for every task, you're going to have a one-line description that sets the expectation for that particular task and what is involved with that task. It shouldn't be overly complicated. You don't need to have paragraphs describing it. Try to do it in one or two sen sentences at most. The more sentences and the more words you have, the more likely it is to be confusing and create more mystery, which is what you don't, you, like you want to avoid that. You want to stop creating confusion and you want to make it very, really, really clear. So do it in as few words as possible, one sentence, maybe two at the most, but make sure everything is very clear regarding that task. And you have rows that go down the grid and, and each one has that clear expectation set. And then you want to make sure you clarify for everybody on the team or everyone involved that accountability and responsible are two different aspects of the RACI, right? It's the R and the A responsible and accountable. There's two, that's two different things that have to get done by two different, uh, maybe one or more different roles. Okay. So you want to make sure you're really clear on what you mean by accountability and being accountable and what you mean by responsible. Now, typically in my experience, responsible, it, that's for the person that's actually going to do the task and finish the task. They're actually going to like physically, technically, complete the task, right? It's like their job in this particular plan or project to get that particular task done and completed and checked off, okay? So whoever has to actually execute on it is gonna be the responsible person. That's being responsible for it getting done. Accountability is the person that has to make sure 
that task and all the other tasks, maybe in a set of tasks, all get done. Uh, and they probably are most likely not the person that's going to actually execute on the task. They're going to delegate to somebody else on the project. So it's like the project leader typically is accountable for certain things or certain people roles within your uh, plan or your project are responsible for a set of tasks. They're accountable for those things, but they might be delegating each of those four or five things to somebody else to be responsible for executing and completing the task. So accountability is not the same thing as responsible, being responsible for it. It's being accountable that people that are assigned get their piece of the, of the plan or the project finished on time. So think of it like if you're kind of project managing a piece of it with a bunch of resources, you're accountable. The people that actually execute are responsible. So that's the, you want to make sure you make that very clear to the team between those two because you don't want anyone confused on, am I responsible or accountable? Does that mean I do the work or do I delegate the work? or what? Well, that brings me to the third one. Some roles, depending on the project or, or um, you know, a plan that you're rolling out, it might be the same person that's accountable and responsible, meaning they're accountable for getting it done, making sure it gets done, and they're responsible for actually doing the work. So they might, if it's a smaller team, you might have several people on the small team, right? Three or four that are accountable and responsible. So that's called having multiples. So with the same role is has multiple responsibility. They might also be consulted. The C in RACI means consulted. So maybe they're also consulted by other people that are accountable for other pieces, but they're consulted for those pieces, but they're accountable for their piece and maybe responsible for one or two. And then they have, hold a couple other people accountable for being responsible for the other two out of the four, if there's four tasks or something like that. So there could be multiple uh, hats that some people might be wearing, including yourself. As the leader, you might be accountable for all of it, for the whole plan or the whole project. You're accountable for it, so you would be checked on all of them, but you might also be responsible for a couple pieces that you're gonna do yourself in that bigger plan or project, okay? So that's typically what I mean by multiples. And so you have to set expectations about that too, that some people are gonna wear multiple hats, but not everybody. It just depends on the project or the task that you're, that you're creating the RACI for. And in every role, I really do believe this, that every role should be informed. Some people have told me in the past, you know, Maverick, maybe in certain tasks, certain pieces of this, of this plan or this project, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna know about, I don't need to know about. It. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I've had it happen enough times in my career that the person that said they didn't want to be informed was exactly the person that needed to be informed about a particular task and they weren't. And it caused a lot of delays. It caused a lot of failure that happened because they felt at the time when we were planning out the racy, they were like, I don't need to be informed of that, that, and that, this ABC thing, I don't care. The thing is, it's not about whether they care to be informed, it's whether they should be informed or not. So I really believe that everybody on the, on the team should be informed of where the, where the status is of all the tasks. They should be informed about the tasks. They should be made aware that all these tasks are getting completed and they should be all checked for everyone because you never know who on your team or who in the project might actually need to know about something that they, you just didn't bother to tell them because you assumed incorrectly that they don't need to know or they assumed I don't need to be informed. So just go safe, make it safe and comfortable for everyone and assign everyone as the informed person of every task on the RACI if you want to have success with a RACI chart. So I hope this was successful. Um, uh, I, I look forward to seeing you create your own RACI charts and you might also Google RACI and see if there's examples. There's many, many examples and images on the net, on the internet that you can download now just to look at to see what RACI looks like. But I know you're going to use RACI charts and you're going to use it effectively to roll out your plan and execute on your projects. And again, eliminate all the confusion and mystery when it comes to who does what, when, how, and why, and create a wonderful, safe, and comfortable environment for everyone's subconscious minds to feel comfortable to execute and execute well on your project or plan today. Thank you for watching. I know you find value in these videos, didn't you? Now, if you, like me, are in a customer-facing role, you want to get better every day at what you do, but you don't have to watch another video if you don't want to. 